This video lesson is on geometric probability, objective to use segment and area models to find the probabilities of events. After this lesson, you should be able to use geometric models to solve certain types of probability problems. So with geometric probability, uh, the probability of an event is going to equal to the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of possible outcomes. Uh, don't forget that a probability can be expressed as a fraction, decimal, or a percent. So with geometric probability, especially with area, I like to say that um, you always want to find the total area and then the area of what you're trying to hit or the outcome that you're trying to achieve. So to summarize, with area, so if you want the probability of something, so probability of an area, Okay, you're going to have total area over area of shape that you want. And you're going to see examples. Okay, So if you have a square inside of a circle, let's do a little diagram here. So if you have a circle and then you have a square inside of it, okay, and I ask, Okay, what's the probability you hit the shaded region? Well, in order to find the shaded region, okay, you need to know the area of the square. So you want the probability of the shaded region, which is going to be equal to, okay, the shaded region would be area of shaded region over total area. Well, the total area in this case would be the circle. Okay, so you find the area of the square and divide it by the area of the circle, and that's the chance that you're going to land in that square. I could rearrange it. Okay, so if I shade in just the circle, okay. So if I want the probability of the shaded region in this case, this is going to be the area of circle minus area of the square over the area of the circle. Because when you take the area circle and subtract the square circle square area, you will get the area of the shaded region and divide it by the total area. Well, the total area that we're dealing with here is the circle. So we're going to do some examples. So probability and length. Okay, what's the chance that a uh, point will lie on a segment? Okay, so let's zoom in. So the chance in here, so this A to D, okay, well, A to D is one, two, three lengths, okay, A to D is three, and B to C is one. So the chance that S is on BC is one third. So AD length, BC length, okay, remember, two capital letters next to each other indicates distance or length in geometry. So Point K is on ST. Well, ST is from S to T, which is 2 to 14. So S to T is 12. What is 14 minus 2 is 12. What's the chance that K is on QR? Well, here's QR. Here is S to T. So what's the chance that this point is going to be somewhere on QR? Well, the probability that K on ST, or sorry, that K is on QR, K on Q to R is equal to the length of QR over the length of ST. Well, Q to R is 8 minus 5, which is 3. S to T is 12. Reduce it, you have 1 fourth. 
Okay. One fourth is 25 percent. Because one fourth is 0 0.25. 0 0.25 times 100 gives us a percent. So the chance that k is on qr is one fourth. Let's try another example. H is on st. So s to t is this length. What's the chance that uh, h is on sr? So what's the chance that we're going to be on s to r? So I want the probability that h is on sr. So therefore, it's the length of sr over the entire segment length, which is s to t. s to r is 8 minus 2, which is 6 over 12, which is a half, which is 0.5, which is 50% chance that you're going to land on SR when you have point H placed at random. Let's try a uh, real world application problem with trains. A commuter train runs every 25 minutes. If a computer commuter arrives at the station at a random time, What's the chance that he's going to have to wait at least 10 minutes? Well, let's draw in a number line. And this number line is representing how long he's going to wait. So this is, he's either going to wait zero or he's going to wait 25 minutes. Okay. So let's put 10 down. Okay. And this is, this line, okay, represents the wait time. Okay. So what's the chance that this commuter, this person, when he arrives at this train station, is going to wait at least 10 minutes? So that means he can wait 10 minutes. He can wait 11 minutes. He might even wait 25 minutes. So what's the chance that he's going to wait between 10 to 25 minutes? So we're looking for the probability that this guy is going to wait between 10 and 25 minutes. Well, the segment length that I drew is 25. So that's going to equal 25. The chance that he's waiting between 10 minutes and 25 minutes is, well, what's the length? It's 15. If you reduce it, 5 goes into both, so we have 3 fifths. So the chance that he has to wait between 10 and 25 minutes is 3 fifths, which is 60%. So again, the number line in this problem represents how long he waits. He's either going to wait zero minutes or he's going to wait 25 minutes. In this case, I want no, at least 10 minutes. That means he's waiting. He can wait 10 minutes. He can wait 11 minutes. He can wait 12, 13, 14, all the way up to he could wait 25 minutes. So the chance that he waits between 10 and 25, well, the length of the entire segment divided uh, on the denominator and his possible uh, length of waiting is 15. So three fifths, sixty percent. Same type of problem. Okay. Commuter is going to wait. Train comes every twenty-five minutes. So here's our waiting time. You're going to either wait zero or twenty-five. So again, this represents wait time. What's the chance? No more than five minutes. Well, that means you can either wait zero. One, two, three, four, five. So he can either, that's the segment length we want. What's the chance he's going to wait between zero and five minutes? So I want the probability he's going to wait between zero and five. Well, the length of the wait is 25. That's five. So the chance he's going to wait between zero and five minutes for his train well, the segment length of waiting no more than five minutes is five. So reduce it is one fifth, which is 
20%. So let's go into probability with regions. So the area of region N divided by the region of region R gives us the probability that S will be in region N. Okay. So here you just got to find your areas and then divide and you get your chance. So chance is probability. Circle inscribed in a square point Q in the square is chosen at random. What's the chance or probability that Q is in the shaded region? So what's the chance that I'm going to be in this yellow region? Well, the probability that Q is in the shade is going to equal to, well, how do I get the shaded region? It's going to be area of the square minus the area of the circle divided by the area of the square. Because the region that's shaded is part of the square. Well, how do you only get the shaded region? You have to find the area of everything of the square and take away the area of the circle. And we get the area of the shaded region, okay? Well, the area of the square is 36 minus area of the circle. Now remember, area of the circle is pi r squared. So I have to draw in my diameter. My diameter is 6, therefore my radius is 3. How do I know my diameter is 6? Well, it's a square. All sides are 6 in a square. So from point A to point B is also 6. Therefore, my radius will be 3. So minus pi times 3 squared all over 36. So my probability of the shaded region is 36 minus 9 pi all over 36. So you got to go to your calculator. So 36 minus 9 pi, actually use the pi symbol here. So when you do that in your calculator, you get we'll round to the nearest hundredth. We have 7.73 over 36, 7.73 over 36. Now uh, the chance is, uh, again, round to the nearest hundredth is 0.21, which is 21%. Let's try another one. Chance that you're gonna be in the shaded region. Well, the probability that we're gonna be in the shaded region is going to be the area of the square minus the area of the triangle over the area of the square. So the area of the square, okay, length times width or side squared is 25 minus, whoops, so area of the square is 25 area of the triangle is half times the height times the base all over 25. Okay, how do I know the height of the triangle is 5? Uh, again, if I draw on my height, the height is always going to be, uh, the height of a triangle is perpendicular to its base, so I know that this is going to be 90 degrees. So if this is 5, the height's 5, this is 5, so base and height of the triangle are 5, 5. So, which is 25 minus 5 times 5, 12.5 over 25, which is 12.5 over 25, which is going to equal a half, which equals 50%. So your chance of landing in the shaded region is 50%. So there's your little quick lesson on probability with area and segment lengths. If you have any questions about the homework or problems I'm giving in class, please don't forget to ask.